What's the most terrifying thing you've seen in real life? Episode 2. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I was 19 I woke up in horrendous pain at 2 am, and my boyfriend at the time drove me to the hospital, which was about 15 minutes away. I would smoke a cigarette and light a new one with my old one, as it was the only way I could breathe. I felt a sharp pain in my left side that felt as though I was being stabbed with a butcher knife. My boyfriend starts to panic as I think I'm having a heart attack and doesn't pay attention or care about speed limits. A cop is sitting at a well-known speed trap about a mile from the hospital. My boyfriend panics harder with a cop car behind us. He thinks I'm dying. I think I'm dying. He decides to try to make it to the hospital and maybe explain later. I don't know. The hospital is on a hill, and it's set up so that if you make a right, you're going to the hospital, and if you make a left, you're on the highway. We're at the bottom of the hill, and there's now three police cars behind us. One of them clips the back of the car, and we stop. I'm mad at my boyfriend, but I'm also grateful to him that we made it. I'm looking at my boyfriend in shock since this shit situation just got even shittier, and I hear my door open, so I turn around, and it's a police officer, and he's got the barrel of his gun to my forehead. I'm holding my side in agony and grasping at my chest and throat, trying to get a satisfying breath. I start begging for my life. I'm crying. I keep repeating that something is wrong with me and I need help. They keep yelling at me. I'll either die from my body failing or from a bullet to the head. I truly felt like I had no way out and was going to die. The scariest moment of my life. Boyfriend tries telling them, and they slam him against the car and arrest him on seven charges. Cop grabs me by the arm and drags me up this giant hill when my main complaint was trouble breathing. He left bruises on me. I had a pulmonary embolism, which can be fatal. In court, the police officer said I didn't look sick to him. The judge deemed it a life or death situation and dismissed all charges except one. To this day, I have no explanation for what I saw, and I don't know if I want one. I just choose not to think about it often. About eight or so years ago, my friend and I were walking through the woods on the mountain behind my family's summer camp in New Hampshire. We were 15-ish. The woods are pretty thick in this area, we weren't on a trail or anything, just putzing around in the woods like idiots, as only teenagers can do, but I have a ridiculously good sense of direction and can always get home in these woods, so we weren't concerned. Anyway, it starts to get a bit dusky, so we head home, which I believe I estimated to be about a half hour walk down the steep slope of the woods. Walking down a super steep incline like that is a hell of a workout on your calves, and at this point we are about 10 minutes walk back from camp, so we stopped on a big rock for a second to rest, and as we're doing that, I hear movement to our left, leaves rustling and sticks cracking and such, the ground here is literally always covered in a thick layer of fallen leaves all year round until it's under snow. We sit very quietly for a minute, hoping to see a deer or something, when out from behind this huge upended tree root structure, maybe 30 feet from us or so, not sure on exact footage, but I'd say like a yellow school bus lengths away, is the biggest fucking coyote I've ever seen in my life. It was absolutely gigantic. Like a Great Dane. So we are completely terrified, thinking we are about to be eaten by a pack of coyotes. It takes a few steps, not toward us but sort of straight ahead, which is to our right, and it looks at us and sniffs its nose up. We are just frozen in place in fear and uncertainty, not at all sure of what to do when this thing stands. Up. On. It's. Hind. Legs. It's standing. I cannot possibly convey to you the wrongness of this sight. It was just this intense feeling of something so unnatural. It immediately turned my blood to ice. It stands there for about three seconds or so, just looking at us all, hunched at a weird angle, before our bodies unfreeze enough to run as fast as humanly possible down this incredibly steep, leaf-covered mountainside to my camp. We made it home in less than five minutes. There is no sign of that thing, and I have not gone back into the woods since. It was the most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life, and he saw it just as clearly as me. We only spoke about it once again after that weekend. I don't even know how to explain how this thing made me feel, like everything in that moment in time was wrong and broken and nothing would ever be okay again. It makes my eyes water and covers me in goosebumps just thinking back on it. I'm well aware of how unbelievable this is, which is why I don't talk about it. But I know what I saw. So, this story might sound like bullshit to some but I swear it happened. Well, enter the scene, my cousin, a pair of mutual friends, and, of course, me. It was a lovely summer night a couple of years ago, and we were in the middle of nowhere in a swampy-ass forest setting up a camp. We really like camping, 
even though the entire group that was there at the time was the sort of peeps to stay 40 hours awake staring at screens and playing video games. So, we were there, chilling as we lit up a small fire to cook marshmallows over. We were sharing stories and fucking around when suddenly. We heard some rat-like noises, and being the stupid fucks we were, we decided to go check it out, with a pair of sticks and stuff in case it actually was a big one. So, after my horrible luck decided that I was going to have to be the one to carry the flashlight, we set out, and it wasn't 10 minutes until we reached some sort of small lake. Not seeing anything, I began swiping the flashlight around in search of whatever was making the noise. Then we see it, or more accurately, them. A whole bunch of koipus straight up, like 12 of them, staring directly at us. I've seen these guys before, they're like huge rat beavers, and they aren't really that aggressive. But they're territorial. Before we had a chance to back off, the whole group began to swim towards us, and we had to hightail it out of there. Sticks or no sticks, I wouldn't give my chance against a group of angry beaver rats with orange teeth. Long story short, we were chased back to camp by koipus, and from the camp, we had to grab everything in a hurry and get the hell out of there. It ain't much, but my grandma is paranoid about things invading her brain, think government probes, x-rays, things like that. I was staying at her house one night, lying on the bed in the guest room, nothing but my phone illuminating the darkness, and my concentration was focused on some YouTube videos. I heard a pillow fall, and that amused me. But suddenly, I shift my gaze up ever so slightly and see a tall, human-shaped, dark figure looming at the bedside, shrouded in blackness. I don't even say anything or move, as I am struck by fear for a few seconds. Then I hear my grandmother's denture-less voice come from the figure, calm down a bit, and, after an interesting conversation, realize that the incredibly odd shape of her head was some sort of hat that blocked rays from the neighbors. I was on a fatherson campout for church when I was a kid, late 70s, early 80s, not certain of the year, in a forest in northern Arizona, yes, they have forests in Arizona. I was showing one of the younger kids how you could take a stick, put it in the fire, and catch the end on fire. It would burn out pretty fast and just leave a glowing ember that you could wave around and kind of make pictures in the dark, a fun optical illusion. I knew enough to throw the stick in the fire pit once I was done with it. The younger boy was not. He got called by his dad, so he threw the stick back into the woods, where he'd found it. You can probably see where this is going. Forest fire, and essentially my fault. Strangely enough, it didn't really terrify me at the time, but I realize how bad it could have been now that I look back on it years later. The men and older boys made a bucket brigade and fought it as best they could until firefighters arrived. I, being one of the older kids not involved in helping with the fire suppression, got to try to keep some of the younger kids calm as their dads worked on hauling water from the creek. We very well could have all died if the fire had smoldered until we'd all gone to bed. It seemed more surreal to me at the time. I wasn't scared, even though I should have been. Maybe my inner pyromaniac was getting off on it. Maybe I was too young to grasp how bad it could have been. I don't know. I have seen several firefighters die in forest fires since, not personally, but on the news. A child I was caring for ate peanut butter on a dare. He was a stupid kid since he was absolutely allergic to it. I ran to get his pen and tried to hand it to my supervisor since she was the only one with clearance to administer medication. She froze while I yelled at her to give him his medication, and the kids started making chalking sounds. In the end, I did it myself. Luckily, the pens are pretty much idiot-proof. Kid is doing fine, he is doing so well, in fact, a couple of weeks later, he licked a pista co shell on a dare as well. Not the brightest kid. When I was 15, me and my two little sisters stayed over at a relative's house. They took the guest bed, and I made a pallet on the floor. The relative reminded us to keep the bathroom light on several times before bed. I got up in the middle of the night to use the restroom, turned the light off, and got back in bed, on the floor. As soon as I laid down, I realized I had turned the light off and tried to get up to turn it back on but couldn't. It felt like someone was pushing on my chest and holding me down. I tried to scream and felt something over my mouth, but I couldn't get anything out. I struggled like this for what seemed like hours. Eventually, morning light came, and the feeling went away. I have never been so afraid in my life. The worst thing I ever saw was when I was a kid. I had my first lucid dream. I have them occasionally, mainly when I fall asleep on my back. During that time period, I didn't know what was going on. The first one turned into sort of an inception. I would get out of bed, fall down this weird hole that opened up under me, and then wake up in bed again. This repeated dozens of times until I actually woke up, and I was too scared to get out of bed in fear of it still being a dream. 
The second worst one was a lucid dream that turned into a nightmare. All I remember is shadowy figures that were all around me, and then my dog barking at me aggressively at the foot of my bed. I couldn't do anything other than lay there and scream in my head because I couldn't move my mouth. This happened yesterday. My brother and I were swimming in a river in Golden, Colorado, and he got stuck in an eddy. He couldn't swim out of it and tried to float on his back, but kept getting tossed around. He yelled help, and I jumped right in, grabbed his arm, pulled him onto my back, and tried to swim out, but I underestimated the force and couldn't do it. I yelled I can't, and some guy on a rock yelled to swim into the current, going in the opposite direction to ride the rapids out. At this point, my brother was cramping up and could hardly move. I muscled him further up onto me and used all my force, more than I thought I even had, to swim us straight into the rapids. We floated downstream a bit and eventually drifted into the side wall, and I could stand. We both climbed out okay and got him checked out, and he turned out fine, but we are all very traumatized by the whole situation. It's still hard to sleep, even two nights later. About a year ago, I was home alone with my sister, who had to stay home from school because she had strep throat. My mom spends a lot of time with her boyfriend after work, and I had no classes at the local college I went to that day, so we weren't expecting anyone home until around midnight. Around 9.30, there was a knock at our door, with a guy outside saying he had pizzas for us. I hadn't ordered any pizzas, and I told him that. The man seemed to leave, and I thought nothing of it. About five minutes later, my sister informed me that she saw someone walking around the side of our house from the upstairs window. We have cameras set up all around our house thanks to some local assholes living in our neighborhood vandalizing our house. Sadly for me, cameras weren't set up on the side of our house because of these giantous bushes that are about seven feet tall. I went out to our backyard and found nothing. About two minutes later, I look through the screen door and see our shed door open. Naturally, I freak the fuck out and get my 12 gauge. I didn't go outside and check it out. Instead, I called the cops and locked all the doors. When the cops got there and searched my backyard, they found the guy crouching in the back of my shed with a big ass bowie knife. He'd been involved in several armed robberies and had stabbed a guy in a fight several years ago. So when I was very young, like eight or nine, I used to stay at my dad's about one weekend a month. One night I was trying to sleep on the floor in his living room in front of his giant big screen TV while he was asleep in his bedroom at the other end of the house. I was always super terrified of the dark. I was one of those kids who would turn off the light and run as fast as I could to get to bed. My dad wouldn't let me sleep with the light on in the living room, he only let me sleep with the TV on. I've always had horrible insomnia, so I'd just try and watch whatever weird cartoons were on at 4am in the 90s. Anyways, I was watching TV, and his little Jack Russell Terrier was curled up next to me, and I was petting him. He had one of those doggy doors about 15 feet away in the dining room that led outside. It was one of the magnetized ones that would click whenever it was opened and closed. Well, I hear it click and think nothing of it because he goes in and out all the time. Except I then realized I'm petting him, and he's right next to me. I was frozen with fear. I just stared at the TV and clutched the dog. I finally worked up the courage to turn and look at the doggy door. It was a freaking monster. That's all I could see. There was a tiny gremlin head poking through the doggy door, looking around. Then it slowly lowered its eyes and locked eyes with me. The only light was the TV. It felt like we were staring at each other and not blinking for like 5 minutes. It was probably only a few seconds, it then slowly, still locking eyes, lowered its head to pull it back out of the doggy door. I couldn't see any kind of shadow or silhouette move outside. So I assumed it was just standing outside the door. I didn't take my eyes off the door until the sun came up outside and I could see there was nothing there. I finally gave in to the exhaustion and went to sleep. I never told anyone about it because who would believe me? Everyone knew I was scared of the dark. The only thing I can think of is that it was a bat. Apparently, my dad had a bat in his house the next week that he had to catch and let out. But it was so dark that it just looked exactly like a freaking gremlin demon face, ha ha. Four years ago, I was driving back home from a friend's house around 3 am or so. The freeway was practically empty, with the exception of a few cars now and then. At one point, I got really drowsy, so I decided to pull to the side for a few seconds, take a gulp of coffee, and just try to wake up a little bit. After about 5 minutes, probably less, of sitting around, I decided to get back on the road. As soon as I put down my cup of coffee, I looked up and saw this really skinny and old meth addict lady staring at me with her mouth wide open in front of my car, illuminated by the lights. I just sat there nervously staring back at her for a minute or so, debating if I should say something. Eventually I just thought, screw it, this might be a trap, and pulled back on the road. 
I can still picture her just standing like a statue. I swear it looks straight out of the conjuring or some shit. I'm 16, I have no license. Summer break. I broke my dad's bench mounted grinding wheel in half by being a stupid 16 year old. I put the two halves together so I wouldn't get in trouble for breaking it. The next day, my 12 year old little brother and I are home alone, doing our own thing. I hear him screaming, and I run towards the sound. He walks in from the garage with his shirt off, holding his belly, with blood pouring down his shorts and legs. I got the van and started to drive him to the emergency room, but my dad pulled up just before I got my brother in the van. I knew I'd killed him. He had turned the grinding wheel on, and part of it flew off and cut him. No guts, just cuts. 30 stitches for him and a lifetime of guilt for me. I was sitting in the passenger seat while my mom and I drove down the highway. As we were driving, we approached a horse trailer, which had tons of weirdly placed windows. I was bored, so I was looking at the trailer as we passed it, hoping to see a horse. However, all windows were closed except one. It was the smallest and highest window, and as I stared at it, I saw a face staring back at me. There was this guy who was staring directly at me through a window that was only big enough to show his face. I've been shot at, but that was the most horrifying thing since it was just so fucking weird. My parents took me in as foster parents when I was four. They adopted me a couple of years later. They continued to take in foster kids throughout my childhood, around 70 kids in total over the years. As you can imagine, having new kids in the house over the years has had its positives and negatives. The experience that terrified me the most happened when I was 13. We had a foster kid move in named Jack, who was 17. This motherfucker woke me up every morning by punching me and laughing. I'm talking full body punches. Nothing that my parents would notice, because he was too smart for that. He told me that if I ratted him out, he would kill me. After a few months, he ran away. I was incredibly relieved. Fast forward a couple of weeks. I am taking out the trash, and it's dark outside. I go behind the garage to dump the trash, and I see my dad's motorcycle parked behind it. I am confused because it snowed that day. Why the fuck would my dad ride his bike in the snow and then leave it outside? I went into the house and asked him. As you can imagine, SHT hit the fan. Cops were called and found out the freezer in the garage was empty. Long story short, Jack moved in six blocks away with friends. Police found the specific brand of wraps from the meat in the trash. Jack was long gone. Fast forward a few months, watching the late news with my mom. A story comes on about a group of guys breaking into an old man's house in a town an hour away. They tied him up and robbed him. As they were leaving, one of them said, go on, I will be right there. They went outside, and he came out in a few minutes. Little did they know that he beat this tied up old man to death. Jack's picture came up, arrested for murder. I'm not sure at what point in this whole mess I was scared the most, but knowing that he might have really killed me if I ratted has stuck with me to this day. I'm 48, BTW. My mother owned a flower shop in a not so good neighborhood on the southwest side of Chicago. I say not so good because the actual neighborhood had honest business owners trying to make a living. But the surrounding neighborhood or outskirts were infested with gangs and druggies. This being said, when I was 11 or 12, my sister, 8 or 9, and I were forced to check on the shop with my mom. My mom had her best friend work in the shop, and from what I can tell, both loved their jobs. My sister and I regularly hung out in the back to keep out of the way of the flow of business. But this time my mom was adamant about us staying in front because we would just be a second. That second turned into the longest second of my life. It was a summer afternoon, and my sister and I were waiting on my mother. The shop had one of those really heavy wooden doors that would squeak when you opened it. I remember hearing the door squeak open, but instead of two customers coming in, I saw two tweaked out druggies staring right into my eyes. The lack of conscientiousness in their eyes made me angry. Maybe 10 to 15 seconds later, there's a gun in my mom's head, and that's when I lost it. I grabbed my sister's hand immediately and ran for the door. Call me what you want. But I ran for my mother to get help. Thinking about it now, that was the right thing to do at that split second. Our neighbor was this Armenian dentist. I ran into his office and started to bark orders, then quickly started to sob. I don't remember much afterward. But I do remember the dentist running from his office chair after these guys. We later found out the guys were, in fact, druggies and were later caught. Police found them a few blocks down in the lobby of Section 8. Loaded. 45 and cash in hand. My mother sold the shop later that year. To this day, I'm constantly scanning my surroundings and finding a way out. But what scared me was that I left my mother with a gun to her head. The Mercedes-Benz badge on the front of the articulated truck, 
18 wheeler, that hit me in a T-bone collision two months ago. At 6 o'clock in the morning, I pulled out of a quiet junction on a quiet industrial estate on a Saturday. I've come out of this junction from work many dozens of times. As I look to my right, I'm in the UK, it wasn't there, I looked left, nothing. So, I pulled out, and about halfway into the road, there it was. 40 tons of cargo laden, ruby red metal are traveling at 40 miles per hour. I had perhaps less than a full second before the impact, possibly enough time to utter the word fuck before it hit me. I survived a fatal collision with some ligament and tendon damage to my knee and a sore back. Always buy the strongest car you can afford, it may save your life, kids. This past marching season, we had three hour long Tuesday night rehearsals every week. One of our trumpets, Ian, is this pretty scrawny, silent kid who probably has a really high metabolism or whatever, making him absolutely bone thin. We had just run through our show a few times, and our BD gave us a 10 minute water break. Me and Ian go over to a few of our friends and decide to lay down for a few minutes. At the end of the break, BD calls us over to start rehearsal again. A saxophonist notices Ian isn't getting up. She and a few other people, me and friends included, go over to check on him. He's completely motionless, and he's not responsive to anything, but his eyes were still open. We thought it was an asthma attack, but we all knew he never had one and doesn't even have it. A few more people are starting to notice, and our drum major makes them go back and tells us to go back to our places. Our percussion coach, guard coaches, BD, and drum major are all going into overtime. I've never seen my drum major like that. He's a 6-1 or so, menacing, but kind guy. He had turned into a military officer, giving everyone orders on what to do, all while looking scared as hell. We called his mom in the hospital, and we put a spare blanket over his body and made sure his condition didn't get worse. He is totally okay, he can't do a fair amount of athletic stuff now, but we still haven't had any updates as to what actually happened. What scared me was that he lied down, and we just left him out of the conversation without noticing the fact that he was dying a foot away from us.